Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is David Clayson, and today I got a video that is not typical for my channel. Um, I was recently ordained in the Assemblies of God just a few weeks ago, and while I was at that ceremony, I had a couple thoughts as I was, you know, taking part in the ceremony. Um, as you were going through the ceremony, you had the licensed people come up, and they had a big long line of people that were getting licensed. And then you had the ordination people come up afterwards, and there was only like four or five of us compared to like the 30, 35 that were up there for the licensed uh, part of the ceremony there. And typically when you get licensed, that's when you're starting out in your ministry. Uh, and then ordination is you've been in ministry uh, for at least two years for the Assemblies of God, and it's being recognized there. And that got the thought in my mind of, man, are, are, are ministers lasting in ministry? And if they're not, um, how's that gonna affect churches? And then that got me thinking, How's that going to affect rural churches? Because rural churches will be hit first before even urban churches. Because what tends to happen is, you know, if there's two churches available, the one that seems more appealing is the one that's more in a more urban area versus one that's more in a rural, rural town. Um, because one, urban area, you probably tend to get uh, full time there where you don't have to find another job. There's more people there to work with. You share the load maybe with other people on staff where in rural you're, you might have to find another job to work um, to, to make up for any pay while you're still ministering. A lot of the ministry of the church falls on your shoulders. Smaller congregation, all these things make urban, t you know, especially I think for my generation and younger, more appealing. And we'll, we'll talk about that here first. But I, I did some research here and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to present to you, uh, you can find online. I'll leave it in the description below. A lot of it's on the AG website, Assemblies of God website itself. And this video is specifically for the Assemblies of God. So if you're uh, on here and maybe you're a Methodist, Baptist, or Lutheran or something like that, um, this is specifically for the Assemblies of God. But these statistics, that's where these come from and everything like that. So just so you know, heads up. But um, first off, just to define what rural is, um, it's a town with a population of less than 10,000. Now, I'm in a town right now, I'm a senior pastor in a town of 1,050, so 10,000 still seems like a big number to me <laughs> for population. But another another thing to realize is that one in five Americans uh, live in a town that is 2,500, so 2,500 or less. And so there's still plenty of people living in rural towns. And then here's some st statistics from the Assemblies of God website. There are 3.2 million adherents or people who attend Assembly of God churches regularly in the United States. So 3.2 million. There are 12,938 churches in the United States, Assembly of God churches in the United States. And there are 37,713 ministers in the United States. And you hear those numbers and you think, That's, that, that should be good. There shouldn't be any... Churches without pastors in the United States because there's more ministers than there are uh, churches. But, you know, you average that out, that's about 2.9 ministers uh, per church. Uh, but as we get further on to, into the numbers, you see that uh, that does not tend to be the case. But uh, looking at an Assemblies of God article it, from 2017, that they stated that 50% uh, of ministers that graduate college go into ministry in a rural rural setting in a town that's less than 10,000. You're like, well, that's a good thing too. Um, but then you have to look at the gradu graduation rate and those that are going to be pastors at r in rural communities. Um, I grew up, I grew up, I went, I studied uh, at Trinity Bible College and my class, which was the class of 2014, um, those that were in the ministry department and were specifically in the pastoral ministry department uh, studying to be senior pastors. There was only two of us. Um, we had a missionary. We had, a, I think, a youth and the kids as well. But there were only two that were looking at going directly into uh, senior pastor positions or you know positions that would be in those rural communities. Um, so... And 50%, you know, that's good, but again, you got to look at the graduation graduation rate and, you know, what their their majors are too when they're graduating. And just a fun fact for the Assemblies of God, those of you that know it, uh, there are 61 Assembly of God districts in the United States. Pretty interesting. Anyways, so moving on here, um, what I have here, these next numbers, again, you can find them on the Assemblies of God website. I'll link them below. 
um, but you can I'll pop up the image on on uh, on the screen here for you too. But on there they have the Assemblies of God does does a good job of tracking their ministers, but they have a, a, a statistic page for ministers that were added to the Assemblies of God that received that got their credentials and those that were terminated or left the Assemblies of God as ministers. And so in 2021, here I'm just gonna throw out some numbers for you. 2021. Uh, 1,863 ministers were added, sounds good, but 2,019 left, meaning that left a vacancy of 156 uh, ministers, that, or 156 spots that they were in ministry spots that were left open. In 2020, and this is going to probably be the premise of my next video, talking about how COVID had an impact on the Assemblies of God ministers, because this number is crazy, especially when you look at the whole chart. But in 2020, only 1,640 people became credentialed ministers in the Assemblies of God, and 2,124 people left, uh, or you know their licenses elapsed, uh, or you know they were kicked out, or anything like that from the Assemblies of God. So that that left a deficit of 484 spots if they're in ministry. In 2019. Uh, and this is kind of showing you that COVID number there, but 2019, 2,073 people became credential ministers in the Assemblies of God and 2,075 people left. So just a difference of two there. And then in 2018, and if you look at even going all the way back to the year 2000, so from 2000 to 2018, you had more ministers entering into the Assemblies of God as credential ministers versus those that were leaving. It was You had to go all the way back to 2000 to look at the last time that the Assemblies of God lost more ministers than it gained. But in 2018, you had 2,243 ministers join and 2,046 leave. Uh, and that's, you know, an addition of 197 there for you. Um, and so, again... I'll do another video on COVID and the impact on Assemblies of God ministers there. We can see that in that number there. But past couple of years here uh, has not been good. We've had more ministers leaving than joining the Assemblies of God as in, uh, in the United States here. And that because of that, that's going to leave vacancies in churches. And, you know, because of rural churches and the challenges that are there. I'm not saying that there's no challenges in, in urban churches or churches in big cities. They have their unique issues there. But... Um, I think the first one, this is my opinion, take it or leave it, but I think the first ones to be affected will be rural churches because of that. And then the next thing here again, another statistics from the Assemblies of God there, is the average age. Average age here. Average age of ministers, and this is of, as of January 1st, 2022, so this year. Um, the average age of ministers in the Assemblies of God is 56 years old. 56. Um, and then going down the list there, those that were ordained, average age is 61. Those that are licensed, six, or 52. Those that are certified, uh, 50. 50 years old. Certified, which is certified as those that are like in part-time ministry want to be recognized by the Assemblies of God. But even that age is like 50. It's crazy. And then another random statistic for you. The oldest person licensed in the Assemblies of God as of January 1st, 2022, uh, is 104 years old. And then the youngest licensed I saw there was 18 as well, um, which is interesting. But but yeah, so we're seeing there that the average age is is up there. You know, it's, it's above 50, 50 and above for certified, licensed, and ordained. And I think, I can't remember if I said it in this cut or not, but I think when you look at those 40 and under, um, they tend to want to be where there's more action or where there's more things to do, and that tends to be in, in, in bigger cities. Um, and again, I think this is my opinion, my own observation, but when we look at those that were coming into the Assemblies of God and those that, that weren't, you know, a lot of times what will happen is people will start out as youth pastors. They don't feel... Right, starting out as a senior pastor, maybe do some learning, uh, and then eventually they'll go into uh, the senior pastor position. But um, 
I don't know. Again, I think what happens there is that the older generation, they are more welcome or more open to pastoring those more rural churches, especially if they're near the age of retirement. Or if they are retired, they do like pulpit supply uh, for those rural churches. But um, the younger ones, I don't know. I think, I think it's tougher to bring them into those rural church settings. There, so... <clears throat> Okay, we're back. I am not in my basement in my nice studio with a microphone that cancels out all noises. So we had some noisy cars driving by, so I had to restart. Anyways, my basement's still flooded. Uh, so the next statistic that you can find in the Assemblies of God, and again, I think this affects rural churches because I, I just, I don't know, looking at statistics, looking at ministers that I know, they want to go to towns or cities that are bigger, that have Walmarts, you know, stuff like that. But this is this statistics from the Assemblies of God are ministers under 40 in the Assemblies of God. Um, and if you look at this chart that I'll have up on the screen, it goes to the year 2000 and all the way to 2021. So 21 years there for you. And you can see if you look at the percentage column, the percent of ministers under 40 is in a continual decline in the Assemblies of God. In 2000, there were 32,310 ministers um, and 26.2% were under 40. So that was 800 or 8,450 ministers were under 40. In 2010, a decade later, we had more ministers, were 35,023 ministers, yet the percentage of those under 40 were 22.1%, so uh, about 5% lower. And the number there is 7,987 ministers under 40. So it's less than 2,000 a decade later. Then a little over a decade after that, more recently in 2021 here, we had even more ministers, 37,557 ministers, but only 18.1% of them were under 40. Uh, so again, in 2000, we had 8,450 ministers under 40. In 2021, we have 6,700 and 85 ministers under 40. So that, that's showing us because we're getting more, we have more ministers, yet it keeps being lower and lower for the age of ministers. If I am reading that correctly, that means that uh, the ministers that have been there since 2000, 2010, and so on, they're sticking around, um, but, and so they're getting older and older, and they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s but then we're not getting so much of a, a replenishing rate down low, Minist younger ministers coming into the ministry there. Um, and again, you know, how is this going to affect rural communities? Well, again, I think it's going to, you know, even look 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, uh, it's going to be tough to have pulpits filled in the Assemblies of God if this doesn't change. Um, Man, and there's so many more statistics I can bring into this here. Like how, you know, if you look at our youth groups nowadays, that they're at, they get God at youth groups and they might not go to church on Sundays or they get God at youth groups, but then once they go off to college, they don't care about God anymore. Or, you know, pe we see parents don't go to church themselves, even though their parents took them. And then they don't bring their kids to church. And we're seeing that effect too in ministry as well. And so many things outside of the Assemblies of God and statistics that show us that this is part of the reason why in the Assemblies of God, our ministers' average age continues to be older and older and older. Again, the average age right now, uh, as of January 2022, is 56 years old in the Assemblies of God. And if you look at the median number there of all that, it's not much different. And so how is this going to affect rural churches? Well, as we continue to progress and if this continues to happen, this decline in younger ministers coming into the assemblies of God uh, and this, deep, and this, this uh, increase that we've had these past couple years of min more ministers leaving than, than coming into the assemblies of God, we're going to find more and more pulpits being empty. More and more churches not having pastors. Um, and it's, again, my opinion, but I've seen it already. It's going to start with rural churches. Um, I think what happens is if, you're, if your church is in an urban area, they tend to, uh, uh, they, might trend, they might switch out of pastors a lot, but they get pastors pretty quick too. But we have a church in our area that's been sitting for two years now without a pastor in a, in a rural community, about a 1,500. Um, 
p uh, population, but they've been sitting for a while. So it's already we're already starting to see that in the rural churches where pulpits are are remaining empty. So what has to happen? I know right now it seems uh, that the Assemblies of God specifically is having a push for bigger churches, maybe in more urban areas, to adopt, I guess you can kind of think of it that way, adopt a church in a rural setting. Um, that's kind of a push, but what the bigger push seems to be, and I, in my opinion, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be the healthiest, is that instead of trying to revitalize a church that's already established in a, in a smaller community, they will go and these bigger churches will plant a brand new church in those smaller communities. And, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to that sometimes. Uh, the older church will, they're just stuck in their ways. They don't want to have any change. And that's causing issues and, not, and it's causing them to die off. Um, but at the same time, that, hurts the church that's already there too. I don't know. So, But I'm just seeing that in the Assemblies of God right now where they're adopting a community and either planning a church or trying to revitalize a church. And what they'll do there is they'll start off because they don't have someone on staff to go there yet. What They'll start off by maybe have like a worship team there or someone lead worship and then they'll tune into the main service at wherever the main church is at as a pastor preaches there. So they'll have it on screen. And I think their goal is to eventually get someone there uh, to minister in person there, um, and in that way, kind of revitalize or have a church in the in the commu rural community that way. But you know, talking with some people, you know, we're seeing satellite churches is what they call them, where they might have their own worship team, or or they might tune in for the whole thing, worship and the sermon at the main campus there. And so, is that where rural churches and the assemblies of God are headed? And if that's where it's headed, is that a good thing? I suppose if that's the only ministry that can happen or that is able to happen in those towns, I suppose so. You know, I don't know, something to think about. I, uh, <clears throat> in our town, we are not the biggest, biggest church in town. We are actually, I guess if you're going by numbers, we'd be the third biggest and there's only four churches that meet on a Sunday morning in our town. Um, we're the only evangelical church. Every other church, you know, you go to the church and um, yeah, pretty liturgical in their services and everything like that in their ministries. Um, and we're the only Pentecostal church in town. So we have a, a Lutheran, a Catholic, Presbyterian, and ourselves. Uh, and a minister who has since retired but when he first got here, we're, I'm on a minister association. And another member who's not part of any of the churches there, but is a minister in her own right, who joins us for that, let me know that that minister shared that, you know, they, ex they expect that in 10, 15, 20 years, the only church, churches in town to be open to be the Catholic and the Lutherans. Um, and again, you look at the, at the attendance rate there, and yeah, that makes sense. Um, but... I don't know why I brought that up. I might cut that out of the video. But it's just an interesting thought that, you know, Assemblies of God, role wise again, in our... And I'm, I haven't looked into any other de denominations, but in our, um, in our denomination, in the Assemblies of God, with the average age going up, rural churches are going to be hit hard. They're going to have struggle to find ministers. Um, you know, I was looking at the history of our own church, too. I think another struggle is the longevity of a minister in a church. Uh, the church I'm at now, we've been here since 2015, so get coming up on eight years this summer, but the average tenure, other than a few people, uh, is two to three years. And that's not good either because it doesn't really allow for effective ministry because you can't really connect with the community in that amount of time. Um, and that means, you know, the church just gets done finding a pastor and then they move on I had to find another pastor a couple years later. So anyways, these are just thoughts that have been rumbling around in my mind for the Assemblies of God specifically. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you think these are valid thoughts that I have? Do you think, what are, what are these statistics that you look at? And again, you can take them out, check them out yourself, but 
what do you think? Do you think that's where the Assemblies of God is trending? Where, you know, as we 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I mean, we're going to see a lot of empty churches in rural areas. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Um, I think my next video here, going to the statistic about just kind of ministers and how how COVID, we, you know, we're kind of, it depends where you're living. In, the, in North Dakota, we're pretty much back to normal for the most part. Uh, but it depends where you're living, but COVID's kind of passed us. But just taking a look at how that affected ministers. That you, I read you that number there already. But, but yeah, uh, this is a long video, 20 minutes. If you're still watching, what do you think? Post in the comments. Uh, let's interact. I don't know what else to say. This is a long video already, so I'm going to end it right here. Uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. Have a blessed day, and we will catch you in the next video. See ya.